All right, team, so this is the game we're going to be playing. So you see, got this little crab. It shuffles along the bottom. And you can see he loves eating muffins. Sometimes he misses the muffin, though. And instead of the muffins eaten going up, the lives go down. So when we eat a muffin, he loves that. And there's a little kind of animation thing that's associated with that. But his lives will reduce when those muffins hit the ground. And when he gets to zero, lives left. Oh no, he's a food waster. Um, which, you know, is a terrible thing to waste food. So he gets punished, banned, exiled to the desert. So that's the game that we are going to be making as this tutorial um, progresses. <sighs> okay, so this is the blank um, kind of uh, template that we're working with. So I've taken all of the code out that made the crab move from left to right and the muffin fall from the top. All of that kind of stuff I've removed. And this is our blank slate. Um, so first of all, down here you can see we've got our sprites. So I've got our muffin sprite and our crab sprite. Now you'll see here that when I click on a sprite, it's got a script section. This is where I put in all my code that controls how it works. And it's got a costume section. Um, so there I can switch between those costumes to kind of help animate my uh, characters and I've got a sound section as well and I can put some sounds in there if I wanted him to maybe like play some music or when something happens I could play like a bang noise or something like that. On the left we've got our backdrops. So here we've got a nice underwater backdrop. If I switch to backdrops you can see when I, when I finish the game, when the game ends I switch the backdrop to a desert scene, okay? And that's just using uh, the backdrops for that particular stage. Yep, so I can switch between these costumes or these backdrops, and I can switch between the costumes for a sprite as well, okay? So they all have these three things, scripts, costumes, and sounds. So if you wanna create a new sprite, you can come in here and you can see I can choose from a library, I can draw a new sprite, or I can upload from a file if you wanted to search the internet. The same is true for our stage as well. I can choose a backdrop from the uh, library or I can paint a new backdrop. Um, once I have my backdrop in here, I can edit it as well. You can see I can add things in like text or I can change colors and stuff like that. Um, so you've got a few tools in Scratch that you can use. Now, what I want to do, um, one thing that's actually pretty important, if I go up to the top right and click on Set Costume Center, you can see my Costume Center is right in the middle of my crab. Yeah, it's really important. Um, if it's not in the center, it can cause a few issues. So you can see I've moved it away from the center, and now my positioning for my crab is, crab is off. He's actually moved down um, below the screen. So it's really important that the center is set to the center of the sprite. And that way when you're moving your sprite around on the screen, you'll always be in the correct place. So that's really important. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move away from costumes. I'm gonna go to scripts. So costumes is the appearance of that sprite. Scripts is what controls how it moves um, and what it does. It's the programming side of it. Now everything in Scratch is driven by events. Yep. So when the flag is clicked, um, that's at the very start of the game. So to start our game, we click on this flag, this green flag. So there are a few things that maybe we want to do right at the start to set up our game. So relating to this crab, we may want to say, okay, right at the start of the game, he should be in a particular place. So we can say, go to X and Y. We want him to go to a particular position. And you can see as I move my mouse around, the X and Y coordinates are updating. So if I wanted to put them up here in the middle, I could have like an X of say zero, yep, and a Y of zero as well. And that would be right in the middle of the screen. Yep, but we're putting them down on the ground. So we could say X zero and Y say negative 139, 140, that kind of thing. So let's change that to negative 140. Yeah, and we'll see what that does. Yeah, so it's moved him down a little bit. That's good. I like him there. Crawling along the bottom of that seabed. Okay, so when that's clicked, also, 
it's a good idea to kind of make sure that his costume's correct. So he's got a few costumes that he could be wearing. Um, so I'm just going to make sure uh, that he's wearing the right costume. So I went to motion to send him somewhere, yeah, to change his X and Y coordinates, yeah, or to turn him or to move him. But I go to looks to do costume changes. So we want to set or switch him to his correct costume. So he should always be crab A. Yep, that's the costume that we want him to start with. Yep, so no matter if he switched his costume at the end of the last game, um, just by when that flag is clicked, he's going to be set to the correct costume. So that's a little bit of setup. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get that movement from left to right happening. We want our crab to be able to crawl along the floor of the sea. So now, like I said, everything in Scratch is driven by events. So we're going to go to events and look at this one. That looks like something that could be useful. When the space key is pressed, well, I wonder if it's got any other keys in there. So left arrow, that really sounds like something that we could use. When the left arrow is pressed, what do we want them to do? We want to move to the left. So I reckon it's going to be under motion. So we're going to motion and I reckon we could do, all right, move sounds pretty good. Click on move and I'm just going to hit the left arrow and you can see he's moving, but he's moving in the wrong direction. So maybe if I go negative 10 steps, that'll work. And he's moving in the right direction. Very good. Now I could have also, instead of use move, I could have set or changed his X value. Remember the X is the position on the screen, X being the left and right position, and Y being the up and down position. So if I wanted to make that negative 10, I could say, okay, when left arrow is pressed, change his X value by negative 10, and you can see he's moving along as well. All right, so, so far so good. So now that he's moving, I just wanna make sure, uh, yeah, he. Uh, I was afraid of this. He's moving off the edge of the screen. He doesn't stop at the edge. He just keeps going. Um, I'm not too sure how that we how we can stop that, but I'm going to do a little bit of research. Um, and when you're confused about this sort of stuff, you can go onto the internet. It's really really good resources. A lot of people answering questions about Scratch. So I'm going to type in Scratch um, sprite uh, going off edge of screen. I wonder if we can stop. There we go. There's a few things there. So let's have a little quick look. So is there any way? Maybe no option to allow screens. We don't want them to move off. Options can go off the screen. I'm moving. If on edge, bounce. Prevent a sprite from partially leaving the screen. That sounds like what we're after. So I'm just going to click on this. Let's have a little look. On edge bounce. Come on, internet. There we go. So, if on edge bounce block is a motion block, the block checks to see if the sprite is touching the edge of the screen with the move steps. And if it is, the sprite will point in a direction that mirrors the direction from which it is coming. So, it should prevent the sprite from leaving the screen. That sounds like what we're after. So if on edge bounce category is motion, so it should be in the motion stack. Oh, we're in the motion. So let's if on edge, if on edge bounce. Let's try that. Okay, so if on edge bounce. Boom. Okay, I need to move him over into the middle again. So I'm just going to click on that green flag. Because remember, when we do that, we, he resets to the kind of starting position of the game. So now when I click left, it's rotated. But it is stopping it going off the edge of the screen. Now, this is something that we've encountered as a bit of an issue with if on edge bounce. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement. We're going to do it in a slightly more complicated way because I don't think we can use that one so when i go back to here maybe i need to add in a rotation i'm just gonna make sure he's pointing in the right direction so let's try that again I should get him back to his starting point so it's pointing in the right direction he's in the right place um and as i move left yeah he's not rotating unless i use that f on edge bounce 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement. So under control, we're going to use this if statement. And so if something is true, I want you to do something. So if I'm going to sensing, if I'm touching an edge, I want the motion, I want to change that x value basically by 10 to go in the opposite direction from that last move. So I clicked a left arrow and I went back um, or to the left 10, but if I hit an edge, I want to just jump back to the right 10. So let's give that a go, see if it works. So when left arrow, Ah, he might be touching the bottom edge. So maybe we're just going to move him up a little bit. So he's not touching that bottom edge. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. So he's moving all right. And when he hits that edge, he stops. Okay, so you see there we had to do a bit of problem solving. There were a few things that we had to, uh, we had to kind of work around. And that is programming. You have to kind of be able to think uh, about how we're going to solve these problems using the tools that we've been given. So hopefully you followed all that. So after a bit of trial and error, we've got our movement keys working. So we've got our left arrow working. Um, and what we do is now that we've got that done, I'm going to do right click on it and duplicate it. And I'll just make this into a right arrow key. I didn't want to do this before um i'd finish getting the left arrow correct yeah doing it when the left arrow is correct has saved me a lot of time don't have to change it in two places if i change things so i just do one get that working well and then i just duplicate it um, what we can also do is if i right click and go clean up everything is nicely placed so let's go and see if we so we've got left working we've got right working hits the edges and he stops Fantastic, We're making good progress. So we've done our crab, we've done the basic movements for our crab as well as his initial setup. We're gonna move on to our muffin. So remember, everything starts off with an event. So when that flag is clicked, we might be wanna do some setup. Um, so initially I don't want my muffin to be there, I just want it to be the crab. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try and hide it. So I reckon it's going to be under locks. There's show and hide. So I'm going to hide him when the initial uh, thing happens. Okay, so what I'm wanting to do is I want him to just appear from, say, up here. Yeah, and then fall downwards. When he hits either the sprite, um, some sort of eating thing's going to happen. And then I want to send the muffin back up here somewhere and drop down again. Yeah, the same is true when it hits the bottom. I want him to fall and hit the bottom. And when he hits that bottom, he should pop back up here and then drop from a randomly selected position along that X value. Yeah, and just drop randomly and come down and either hit the sprite. Okay, so that's what we're hoping to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something quite sneaky and we're going to make a procedure for a repeated process because our muffin, you know, he picks a random spot up here and then he drops down, then he hits something and then he pops back up here and then he drops down. It's a repeated process. So what we're going to do is we're going to make something called, called a procedure and we often make these in programming for when um, we do something repeatedly. Now how we can do that in Scratch is again with our events. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a message. Yeah, it's called a broadcast. So our broadcast, we're going to make a new message and we're going to call it drop muffin. Yeah, and I'll put a space in between there. So drop muffin. So when I hear this broadcast drop muffin, I'm going to do some stuff. Yeah, and when the flag is clicked, I'm going to say, okay, we should be dropping muffins. What should I do when that drop muffin happens? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to 
fill out what actually happens in this broadcast drop muffin so under events when I receive drop muffin what am I actually going to do so when this broadcast goes out in here will be the code that is performed or is run through when that broadcast is called uh, so what do we want it to do first of all we want our muffin to kind of head up to the top and start dropping yeah but we want it to kind of randomly um, pick its position uh, along the top so you can see here we've got our X and Y positions down here if I move it along you can see it's increasing that X value and the X value runs from about 240 to 240 or negative 240 to positive 240 so when I receive that drop muffin I'm gonna say I want you to go to this particular um, position but instead of going to X say X 10 every time or X 11 or wherever we want that to be a randomly picked um, position so we're gonna go pick random I'm going to drop that in there and we're going to go negative 240 uh, or actually we'll make it about negative 235 we don't want to heading on the edge and to positive 235 and the y is around about say 140 okay so when i receive drop muffin it's going to pop up to the top and it's going to be randomly placed along the top uh, and that's the code that does it now that we've got it positioned we want it to start dropping downward so it pops up say here we want it to start dropping down towards the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to use a loop to do this okay we're going to yeah, we've got a lot of different loops in here we've got a repeat 10 times a repeat forever um, and we've also got these if else statements in here they're um, comparative so what i'm going to use is this repeat until repeat keep doing this code until this is true yeah so the until part is under sensing i'm going to go repeat until we hit um our little friend the crab sprite one so keep doing that until we hit that crab um, if we hit that crab uh, what we want to do is we want to maybe send up another message our broadcast I'm going to broadcast a new message and I'm going to say um, eating muffin okay yep so the crab gets to eat the muffin now the other situation that we need to be aware of is it might not end up touching sprite one but it might end up hitting the floor of the sea so we need to be aware of that so I'm going to go F um and how am i going to do that there's no sprite down here that i can kind of do an if touching but what i can do is i can say if that y value for my muffin gets below say 150 then we've missed it okay so if it drops and that y value hits 150 or negative 150 i should say it's hit the bottom and we can we can say that so let's go Here's that y value. If y value, so we want to go if. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If. Where is it? Operators. Hold on the motion. If y position is less than so i can drop that y position there if y, y position is less than negative 150 and we drop that there then we want to do some things okay so we're going to use procedures now procedures help us kind of keep our code nice and clean as well so if um the muffin hits the bottom of the sea floor we want to broadcast another broadcast new message um, muffin drop no it's probably muffin muffin ruined okay one thing that I forgot to do if we look through this code here when I receive drop muffin it should go to this X value and this Y value so it's sitting up here 
and now it's going okay repeat until we're touching the sprite um, and if y position is negative is less than negative 150 do this but it's not actually falling we're not actually changing its y position so we need to get into the motion section and change that y position uh, so we're going to go change y by negative 10 each time through so it's going to keep repeating this so it's going to go all right change by negative 10 okay and then if y position is negative 150 okay and then it will repeat through and it will keep cycling through that and changing that by 10 um, every time so you can see it falls down okay so that's looking pretty good we're kind of happy with that um, so when i receive drop muffin at the start go to a random x position and keep falling until we either hit the bottom of the seafloor um, in which case we broadcast muffin ruins and we can have some things being said by the crab maybe um, and some maybe some score adjustments and if it does hit the sprites we are going to broadcast eating muffin and that will uh, send us back to the um, beginning so we need to declare what's happening in eating muffin and what's happening in muffin ruins as well so we've kind of sorted out drop muffin so we'll go for eating muffin first so so what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce variables and they're under data a variable is just something that stores a value yeah that can be a number for example I'm going to make a variable called muffins eaten and I'm going to click OK. Yeah, and you can see it pops up in the left there. I'm going to keep track of how many muffins I've eaten. So when my crab starts eating that muffin, once it hits that uh, crab and broadcasts eating muffin and we get to call the code that's in here, I want to increase that variable by one. So I'm going to go OK. I want you to change muffins eaten by one so it increases that by one and now I want it to also what do I want it to do I want it to hide the muffin and then send it back um, to the drop muffin stage I want to redrop it essentially so we've eaten it now we want to put it back at the top uh, and so we can go and do that by going broadcast drop muffin okay so we've done eating muffin and we now need to do muffin ruined yeah so muffins hit the sea floor and it's got lots of sand in it the crab no longer wants to eat it so what do we do in this situation we are going to say when i receive muffin ruined what are we going to do okay um, so first of all, we are going to hide that muffin. Let's hit the seed floor. Uh, we're going to incorporate another variable. And this one we're going to call lives. It could be very useful for you guys in your games. Um, when that, I want to first of all, want to set my lives first of all to an appropriate number. So I'm going to, when my flag is clicked, when the start of the game happens, I want to set my lives to three. I reckon that's a reasonable number of lives. Um, now Muffin Ruin. So when Muffin Ruin happens, I'm going to change lives by negative one. So it's been set to three. I'm going to reduce it by negative one. But what I need to do here also is I need to check that it hasn't kind of hit the minimum number. So we do that with if statements. So if, uh, and we can do that with operators, we can check if it's equal or below a certain number. So if lives, lives equals zero, then what do we want to do? Okay. I think at this stage we're going to use another broadcast and it'll be probably the last broadcast we make we're going to make it end of game okay so if lives is equal to zero after we've changed by lives by negative one 
we're going to broadcast it's game over um, and finish up so we're going to give it a little test and see how it's running Ooh. so you can see that my lives are decreasing at a pretty rapid rate um, so what's obviously happening the only place that I'm reducing my lives is here in muffin ruin so obviously it's getting below negative 150 reasonably quickly and often I think the reasons are there's two two things that we need to fix um, you see here I've got it hiding when it's clicked uh, when the flag is clicked I've got hiding when muffin ruined happens and I've got hiding when even muffin but I don't have it showing anywhere so it's actually being hidden uh, and never actually showing back up so what we need to do is we need to um, send it to a particular place and then show it yep actually have it pop up so it should uh, and that's what's happening it's just dropping down too quickly so what we're going to do is we are going to put in a little wait scenario under control you're going to go wait say 0.25 seconds so it's dropping a little bit too fast for my liking at the moment so we'll go wait 0.25 and that should give it a more controlled fall and you can see there muffins eaten going up by one and as it hits the sea floor it should reduce our lives and okay so it's dropping out the bottom and continually reducing those lives so we've got a couple of things to fix okay i want you to take a moment um and you can just pause the video just wanted you to see if you can figure out why the muffin is dropping past uh the bottom of the screen and then continuing on and you can see it's reducing our lives again and again and again why is that happening take a take a moment see if you can figure out what you think is happening okay so hopefully you've had a little um, attempt at getting that that error found so where it was is when I received muffin ruined which is what happened when it what happens when it hits the sea floor we hide the muffin we change the lives by negative one and we check to see if the lives are at zero and if they are, we broadcast the end of the game. But at no point in this procedure are we asking it to then drop muffin again. Yeah, we're not asking it to reset that muffin to the top of the screen and drop it. So what we need to do is we just need to go to events and we need to broadcast. And we can do that either before or after um, that check. Uh, we could probably do it before actually. It would be a better, better option. And let's just see if that works okay so i'll move this crab out of the way just to test this so it should hit the bottom and then reset and there we go and you can see the lives have reduced by two okay fantastic one thing that we'll have to fix in the future is you see the muffins being eaten they're never being reset um, so at the start of the game when we set everything up we probably want to reset that muffins eaten uh, just so because at the moment it's just climbing and climbing and climbing and never uh, never stopping so I'm gonna leave you guys to figure out how to get that muffins eaten resetting every time the video uh, so the uh, game starts um, so what we're going to do to finish up is we're going to go to the stage. Um, now, when that muffin hits the bottom of the sea floor, uh, when we when we receive muffin ruined, it hides the muffin, it changes the lives by negative one, and then it broadcasts drop muffin again. And that actually probably I'm, I'm changing my mind. That needs to be after um, the if statement. So if lives equals zero, then we want to broadcast end of game. So what we want to happen at end of game. So we want to, when I, events, when I receive end of game, what do we want to happen? When I receive end of game, I would like to stop all of my scripts 
stop all. I believe that stops all of the scripts in this sprite. I may have to come back and change that. But I'm going to go to my stage when I receive end of game. I'm going to switch the stage. Uh, so that's under looks. I'm going to switch the backdrop to desert. Yeah. Which is my, if we look at the backdrops, it's my game over scenario. Okay. Um, so switch back, uh, backdrop and maybe I can put a stop all in there as well. When this guy receives end of game, we're going to stop him as well. Just so everything stops and nothing works. It's the end of the game. It's game over. No more playing the game. You lost. Okay. So let us see how this works. So I'm going to start us off. So I can go left to right. I can eat the muffin, hopefully. And you could put a little animation in for that crab. So switch his costume, get him to say something, maybe include some noises. So that's, I'm down to two lives. I'm not very good at this game. Can't seem to get the muffins. It's very annoying. One life. And we should see it when that hits zero. It should switch to game over. And there we go. Okay. So have a go at uh, making this game, replicating this game. The skills that we're using in making this game should help you when you go to make your final task.